My name is Andrew Goetz, and I'm a resident physician, and this case was done under the direction of Dr. Aaron O'Brien, a consultant in rhinology and skull-based surgery. This is a 71-year-old male with a history of nine months of frontal headaches, which initially improved with antibiotics, but he had persistent disease, and CT scan was obtained. This demonstrated no significant sinonasal mucosal disease, but there was opacification of the medial aspect of the frontal sinus. With intrasinus hyperdensities demonstrated on bone windows here, and then further highlighted on the soft tissue windows. Hyperdensities in fungus balls are a result of iron, magnesium, and manganese as a result of the presence of the fungal elements. The fungus accumulates in the sinus and often has a secondary outflow obstruction that can lead to bacterial infection. Treatment is surgical removal. Surgery is both diagnostic and therapeutic in these patients and may rule out a mass or alternate etiology, and therefore this patient underwent sinus surgery. Here is a right-sided endoscopic view with a zero-degree endoscope following decongestion with 4% topical cocaine. Injection is performed with a spinal needle in the head of the inferior turbinate and the middle turbinate near the area of the axilla. Inferior turbinate outfracture is performed to increase the working room. We elected to reduce the patient's concha bullosa, again for exposure and working room. This is done with a microdebreeder. Posteriorly, you can see the natural os of the concha bullosa cell, similar to any ethmoid cell. Unsynectomy is then performed. This is initiated with a pediatric arterial backbiter and taken anteriorly toward the maxillary line. The maxillary sinus natural os is then appreciated. Since there was no sinus disease in the maxillary sinus, no antrostomy was performed in this case. The unsynectomy was completed here with a microdebreeder. It's important to always be able to visualize the door of the microdebreeder and to bring the free mucosal edge medially so as to protect the orbit. After unsynectomy, here is the view of the surgical landmarks the maxillary sinus os, the ethmoid bulla, and again the dissected concha bullosa cell. We then switch to a 30 degree endoscope and here with the frontal sinus navigation probe we were able to confirm the natural outflow tract of the frontal sinus. Recall that the outflow tract of the frontal sinus is bound anteriorly by the agonazi cell, laterally by the lamina papricia medially by the middle turbinate, and posterior by the concha bullosa. The Agarnazi cell was then collapsed forward anteriorly with the fox curette. This is a safer maneuver than applying pressure posteriorly, as the only thing anterior is the beak area, which is quite solid bone. The frontal sinus outflow tract is then expanded further with the microdebreeder. Following this, several septations are removed, and you can begin to see the fungal elements in the outflow tract. The frontal sinus outflow tract is further expanded using the microdebreeder, and several small bony septations are removed in order to expand the opening and gain further access to the fungus. After the area is expanded, a curette is then used to collect some of the specimen, which is sent for pathologic confirmation. Fungus balls are almost always aspergillus species, which recall on pathologic analysis have acute angles and septate hyphae, which is further confirmed on GMS staining. Fungal cultures are not necessary in cases of fungus balls, but culture may be sent if there is evidence of purulence and a secondary bacterial infection. Flushing the sinus with sterile saline is often very successful at getting behind the fungus balls and removing the debris as shown here. Additional specimen is collected and sent for pathology or simply suctioned away. Finally, the outflow tract is expanded here with a hoseman punch to ensure that it is widely patent and additional irrigations may be performed as needed. And here you see suctioning of the nasopharynx with all of the irrigation and a bit of fungus there as well. Here's a final view of the frontal sinus and outflow tract. Lastly, a bit of hemostatic expansile absorbable packing is placed in the middle meatus to reduce the risk of scar formation postoperatively.
key points for frontal sinus fungus balls include number one, removal of all of the fungus within the sinus itself. This can be done with suctioning. Irrigating can be very successful and often multiple rounds of irrigation can be helpful as well as ensuring a widely patent outflow tract. This concludes our surgical video on the frontal sinus fungus ball. Thank you for watching.